Good day everyone, this is Teacher Ryan O. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for clicking and watching this video. This is my second video on my series of videos for LET or Licensure Examination for Teachers review. I also claim that this is useful for those who will be taking civil service exam and other related math tests. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button now and also hit the notification bell to be or so that you will be notified whenever I upload new videos on my channel. So without further ado, let's get started. For our first question, it says here calculate the mean absolute deviation of the following numbers. 60, 80, 75, I mean 175, and 95. Choices are A, 12.4, B, 14.2, C, 16.1, and D, 18.9. Now, here, um, there is no um, known shortcut or shorter way to get to the solution we can we cannot also um, directly substitute the choices however this is a case of uh, recall let us recall the, the concept of mean absolute deviation so uh, the word mean simply means the average so if you have uh, in this case we have five scores we get the sum of the five numbers or five yeah, five scores and we after getting the sum we divide it by the number by five which is the number of scores the word deviation okay is another way of saying difference or distance now if you hear the words difference or distance there the, the operation involved is obviously subtraction so we need to subtract. So every time you, you, you read or you hear the word deviation, think of it as uh, synonymous with subtraction. So here we will be subtracting our mean to each of the score or uh, in, in statistics, each of the datum. So step one again is to find the mean so add all the scores 60 plus 80 plus 100 plus 75 plus 95 divided by 5 and the mean is 82 after getting the mean next uh, step two is to get the distance or the difference or the deviation of each score or each number from the mean so we will be subtracting each number from the mean but take note we are getting the distance so we will be get we will be getting the absolute value of our answer so there would be no negative answers here so say our first score is 60 60 minus 82 in algebra that should yield negative 22 but since we are getting distance the distance there is no negative distance or there, there is no negative deviation so here we will be uh, getting the absolute value of negative 22 so it we should have positive 22 and so on with 80 80 minus 82 that should be positive 2 after getting the absolute value so with 100 uh, 100 without uh, 100 minus 82 without a doubt is a positive uh, answer which is 18 75 minus 82 uh, it's positive 7 here we should get the positive of it and finally 95 minus minus uh, 82 that should give us 13 now after that our third step is to now get the mean of this deviation so, mean is to add all so 22 plus 2 um, plus 18 plus 7 plus 13 and divided by 5 
but that's the number of scores or number of deviations that we have. So the answer is 12.4. Uh, the correct answer he, therefore is letter A, 12.4. Moving on to question number two, it says the average of five different counting numbers is 20. What is the highest possible value that each of the numbers can have or that one of the numbers can have? I mean, the choices are A. 20, B, 40, C, 30, and D, 90. Now, here we can use the direct substitution technique or strategy that I already uh, explained in, uh, in my first video. So, with that, I would go to the, the options. Now, in this kind of problem, I would go directly to the highest value or the largest number that is in the option. So, uh, in this case, I will go to letter D, 90, 90 being the highest among four uh, choices. So, it, since 90 is it's already a large number, and if you subtract it by 20, that's quite far, that's quite, the, the, the deviation or difference is 70. So with that, I would like to, uh, I would like you to go back to our problem. So our problem states that we have five unique or different counting numbers. So, so in, in recall that in a set, in the set of counting numbers, uh, the least or the, the the lowest counting number is one, and as it as you go on you add one one two three four and so on so since i have 90 as my largest number i'd like to uh consider the lowest both or the bottom counting numbers so what are those bottom four since we have five so 90 being the the, the uh the one of the five so i only need four so i will add one two three and four so adding 1, 2, 3, and 4 to 90, that it will give me 100. So as shown on the right side of, of, the, of your screen, so you have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 90 is equal to 100. And getting the average of that, I'll divide it by 5. 100 divided by 5 is 20. And that, con that affirms uh, our... I will conjecture that D is uh, the probable answer. Thus, 90 is the correct answer here. So, letter D is the correct answer. For our third problem, three brothers inherited a cash amount of 62,000 pesos and they divided it among themselves in the ratio of 5 is to 4 is to 1. How much more is the largest share than the smallest share. The choices are A, 75,000, B, 30,000, C, 24,800, and D, 20,000. Now, in, in this problem, um, we are asked to find the difference between the largest and the smallest share. However, we cannot directly get the difference uh, because we don't have the, the value of each uh, share. So the first part is to find the, uh, the value of each share, the, the, the value of the largest share and the smallest share. So part one here, need to find the share. So to do that, um, I use this way. This is the, the abstraction part of the Singapore math. I did not put bar models here anymore because I there's no enough there's not much uh, space no or there's no enough space. So what uh, I did was to add the ratio so that's five plus four plus one and that's equal to ten and divide the uh, cash amount sixty two thousand by ten. Ten is from the sum of the ratios. That gives me 6,200 
Now, the 6,200 is the value of uh, one share. Okay, so one share. So it's not the value of the the largest and the, the, the middle and the smallest share, but it's just the value of one share. So uh, one in 10. So if, if, if I have 10, so one out of the 10 is 6,200. To find the, the uh, amount of the largest share, I simply multiply 6,200 by 5, since 5 is the ratio of the uh, largest share. So multiplying, I get 31,000. So 6,200 times 5 is 31,000. Next is to get the value of the smallest share. Smallest share, according to the ratio, is 1. So multiplying 6,200 by 1 still gives me 6,200. Moving on to the part 2 of this uh, problem, part 2 in the solution, to, I need to find the difference between the largest and the smallest share. To do that, simply subtract 31,000, that's the largest share, minus 6,200, the smallest share, and that gives me 24,800. Hence, the correct answer is letter C, 24,800. Moving on to our fourth uh, question. What are the missing terms of the sequence 5, 20, 80, blank, 1,280, blank, 20,480? The choices are A, 50 and 210, B, 40 and 160, C, 35 and 135, D, 320 and 5120 now uh, this is a case of a sequence and um, firstly we need to find the pattern and to 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 do that we need to look at the first two or the first three terms now look at the first two terms we have 5 and 20 so, um, how do you get to 20? From your first term, which is 5, how do you get to 20? Now, there are two things, uh, two ways that you get to 20 from 5. It's by adding 15 or by multiplying um, 4. Uh, okay, now moving on, let us check this with the, sec the relationship of the second and the third term. If uh, or whether adding 15 will still work so let's go to 20 and 80 20 obviously you cannot uh, adding 15 will not get you to 80 uh, however multiplying 20 by 4 will bring you or will get you to 80 so with this case this is since we are multiplying a fixed number this is actually a geometric a geometric sequence or progression so uh, since we have already established a pattern which is um, multiplying by 4 we can proceed with uh, multiplying 80 by 4 so multiplying 80 by 4 that should give us 320 so that's the first missing term as uh, shown in the blank after 80 and next is the blank after 1280 so multiplying 1280 still by 4 will give us 5120 hence the correct answer is uh, letter d 320 and 5120 Moving on to our fifth and last question in this video, it says here, at what rate per annum should 2,400 pesos be invested so that it will earn an interest of 800 pesos in 8 years? The choices are A, 
six and a half percent b five and a half percent c four point seventeen percent d six percent now this is a case of simple interest there is no clue that this is um, a compound interest uh, problem so we will uh, just recall our um, our lesson on simple interest so we are asked of the rate or the interest rate and uh, obviously it's in percentage so if you recall um, our the the formula in finding the interest is i is equal to prt i is equal to prt and with that we can solve for the other uh, variables like p r or t now let's check the given so given a principal of 2400 interest of 800 and the time is eight years now interest is different from the interest rate or the rate interest is the amount that uh, the principal gain after being subjected to a certain interest rate so in this case if we now i put here the formula again i or the interest is equal to prt and using the uh, properties of equality i am able to derive the formula in finding the rate or r r therefore is equal to i over principal and time or i over pt so i just need to fill in the values so rate r is equal to i which is 800 divided by the product of 2408 um, so that gives me 0 0.0417 and converting that into into percentage that is equal to 4.17 percent hence at this level we can now get the answer and that is 4.17 percent that is c now I, I put an alternative way or method here in case you cannot remember the uh, simple interest uh, formula in business math so we will go backwards we will use the given and we will go backwards so we are given with an interest of 800 and this interest is gained in eight years so if we if we will be solving this uh, we can solve for the the annual interest since 800 is 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 gained in eight years we divide 800 by eight that gives us 100 that 100 pesos is the interest per year so the next and the last thing that we should do is to find uh what is the the percentage of this 100 in comparison with the principal so to do that we divide 100 by 2400 so 100 divided by 2400 that's equal to uh, again 0 0.0416 although i already put that in percentage here so multiply it by 100 will give me 4.17 percent again this is just a concept of uh, finding the meaning of the value so 800 is the value of the 800 is it, it's the interest for eight years now to get the interest per year simply divide 800 by eight years or by eight that gives me 100 to know the interest rate per year or per annum simply divide 100 by the principal which is 2400 and hence we get an answer of 4.17 percent so if you 
are able to understand the concept of um, interest and interest rate, you can do it without uh, memorizing the, the formula. Hence, the correct answer in this problem is letter C, 4.17%. Thank you for watching this video. May I just acknowledge and cite the sources of my questions. Uh, it's in this link on the screen. And um, you can also Google Top Notcher PH. And uh, thank you for being with me in this video. I hope you learned something. And if you, uh, if you did, kindly subscribe and share this with your friends. See you in my next video and um, I'm wishing you a good and godly day.